I don't want it to fizz up, but I want to open it on camera. Oh, yes. Mm. Need that 4% beer because today is going to be a wild ride, people. Uh, what a strange and wag the dog week we've had for the election. As we reported earlier, U.S. serviceman Willie Schumann remains missing behind enemy lines. It's all, you know, thinking ahead, thinking ahead. That's what producing is. It's like being a plumber. Yes, like being a plumber. Do your job right, nobody should notice. Mm -hmm. well, when you fuck up, everything gets full of shit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, God. What do we do now, huh? Huh? What do we do now, huh, boy producer? Huh, Mr. Winning Emmy, social conscience, whale shit, save the rainforest, peacenik, commie, fucking hire a convict, shithead? Huh? What do we do now, liberal affirmative action, shithead, peacenik, commie, fuck? What do you want to do now? This is nothing, uh, piece of cake. Producing is being a samurai warrior. They pay you day in, day out for years so that one day, when called upon, you can respond. You're training at its peak and save the day. I was starting to second guess whether I wanted to do this with all the Gaza talk. It was constantly Gaza this and Gaza that and Israel this and bomb that and a bunch of college kids over here, sweaty armpits and a bunch of conservatives over here. Like, don't touch my flag. And who cares? Because today we finally have the story that we've been waiting for, the story that is going to make this show, the reason that I'm even doing this. Two worlds of mine came together this week. One, the world of Shane Gillis, i.e. why I do the podcast the way that I do, call it the pod, I hold the microphone, I just keep it loose, and I keep it about the creative, and I keep it simple, and I try to keep it funny. So, that's the first thing. So, Shaman is God. Matt McCusker clearly wanted to talk to RFK. Uh, and he got to do so. And if you don't know who Shane Gillis and Matt McCusker are, and you're part of this whole fucking election people that keep watching me, they're one of the biggest comedy podcasts on YouTube right now, or basically the internet um shane gillis is notoriously known in the pop culture circles as the guy that got canceled from snl i like to see him as the bud light guy and i'm tonight the stella guy to have an interesting story about stella really quick stella is a great beer but also stella is very nostalgic to me because stella sponsored the Sundance Film Festivals. And so every time I got free Stella, and then I would drink Stella in the mountains. And now every time that I drink Stella, I think of mountains. So now living in Florida, I'm like, mmm. Mountains. I did the mmm before the drink. That was kind of weird. Anyway, this is... I gotta gather my thoughts. But basically my two favorite comedians my favorite podcast the greatest podcast to ever podcast the secret podcast is doing a show with the third party candidate that is the third party candidate the first third party candidate of my young voting lifespan and i as an individual who love matt and shane also have only Voting third party. I'm basically the Matt and Shane of the political sphere. Like, I like politics and talking about current events. A lot of people don't because it's not all that funny a lot of time. But I feel like things like Jon Stewart suck balls now. And so here I am trying to do basically the Daily Show, but secret pod style. With that said... I have only voted third party, and it's not like a devout thing. Every single time there is a presidential election on the general ticket, I wait till the day before. I look up each candidate that is on my ballot, and I play their local ads. Most of the time, especially post-Trump, so here's the thing. Here's the voting history. 2012, okay, I ran with 
Ron Paul in the libertarian ticket uh, and went all the way up to our, I don't think he was the libertarian ticket. I don't think he went third party. He was in the Republican par- primary and I was doing Iowa caucus with him. And then some of my friends got driven around in a bus in Miami so that he couldn't speak so that Mitt Romney could talk. And so I decided, well, I'm definitely not voting for Mitt Romney because he's like a weird like Christian dude and I wanted to end the Fed, but like, you know, whatever. And so now that Ron Paul, which was my first, you know, slide into politics, basically the good version of the Tea Party. Okay. So for all of you that know about the Tea Party, it's like this thing that's like basically like what Stephen Colbert made fun of. Um, and I was like on the cool side of the Tea Party. I was like, wait a minute. But the policies, they work. And so Ron Paul was kind of that. And the Young Libertarians, which Yale, shout out Yale. Yale's still running hard. And I actually like Yale as a group. Don't fucking care if you like it or not. Um, But yeah, 2012, did, <clears throat> did that campaign. Never did another campaign after that. Moved into entertainment. Went to college. Did all that shit. 2012, I ended up voting... Um writing for Ron Paul 2000 and because uh because as a protest vote to Mitt Romney because he didn't let Ron Paul speak at the Republican convention and I had worked hard for Ron Paul and I thought it was bullshit if he ran all the way to the convention he should be allowed to speak that was the whole point of running the convention instead of giving up beforehand or whatever but so that he could have his little spotty speech and they were like no you're not going to get 5 minutes fuck you so I was like, well, then fuck you. You're not going to get my vote. And I don't like Obama because Tea Party and I'm like on the cool side of things or whatever. But like, I'm not racist. So Ron Paul right in. OK, first presidential vote. Second presidential vote was 2016. OK, and here I was talking to some of my friends and being like, God, wouldn't it be crazy if Donald Trump becomes the Republican nominee? Like some crazy outsider that would like fuck this whole thing up. And then he did. So you'd think I'd vote for him, right? No, because when I went down to the day before, I watched both parties' ads, and both of the ads were just ads being anti the other side. The Hillary ad was like, Trump is evil. The Trump side was like, Hillary's evil. And they weren't talking about what they were doing. Meanwhile, the person that I voted for in 2016, Jill Stein, third party green, was speaking about her issues. So I voted Jill Stein. Okay. So we got right in Ron Paul, Jill Stein. Now we're here at 2020. Oh my God, the world may end. It's all COVID-y, BLM, yada, yada, yada. Trump, Biden, Trump, Biden. Me, 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 me. You don't want to let fucking Biden win or whatever, right? Well, again, same policy. Day before, watch the videos. Again, Biden, anti-Trump, Trump. Anti-Biden. Guess who wasn't either of those? Joe Jorgensen. Which leads me to the point of why I've always been a third-party voter. Because at the end of the day, the thing that third-party voters have been voting for more than anything else is their ability to get on the debate stage. If they get certain percentages of the vote in the overall general election of these states... Then they will poll higher, i.e. they will be able to be in the debates, which is leads me to my conclusion. Matt and Shane, RFK, they meet, they converge in the secret of all secrets. That's not a secret. And in this thing, RFK lets it slip that he's he's pulling. He's probably going to pull it over 15 percent. So he's probably going to get in based on. The rules of the game of the debates. They, they won't uh, debate you at this point. Neither of them will. Well, the debates are scheduled after the conventions. So there's a presidential debate commission, and it has scheduled three debates. The first one is in September 18th. And if I'm at a, if I meet certain metrics, which the big metric is 15% in, in recent polling, then I will be on the debate stage and I should meet that metric. 
Mm. So they should have to debate me. I mean, they should debate me anyway because of what the, you know, because my favorability ratings are better in every poll. My favorability ratings are better than either President Biden or President Trump. You're wondering why I have an aggressive tone and I'm not being funny. It's, you know, two of my heroes coming together, third party candidate that could possibly get on the debate stage and then the greatest comedy podcast to ever exist emerging in one well it's because within 12 hours of him making that clear on one of the largest syndicated comedy podcasts in the united states hint 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 within 12 hours joe biden releases this video Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesdays. Now, if you're still with me and you still don't know why I have this tone, it's because of the verdict. In his challenge to Donald Trump, there was also a back catalog of rules. One of which was no third party candidates. No third party candidate. What, what if RFK is at 15%, Robert Kennedy Jr. at 15% in September? You still don't think he should be on the stage? Now, listen, the reality here is that there are two candidates with a pathway to 270 electoral votes. That's President Joe Biden and that's Donald Trump. And the American people deserve to hear from them because that is the reality that we're facing. That is the choice in this election. So we should have a debate between the two candidates on the issues. Joe Biden will articulate his historic record of accomplishment, his vision for the future. And Donald Trump will go out here and try to explain why he's bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade. Donald Trump is going to accept the debate no matter what because he keeps doing what he's always been doing, which is just like, Biden sucks, Biden sucks, Biden sucks. There was no strategy. There was a jump to conclusion on this one. I really, truly believe that, and I believe that the Biden campaign got a leg up. Why would they be doing this, though? Is it possibly because everything has been about Israel and the Middle East, and now, finally, for once, we can wag the dog back in to why Trump is evil. Should we see this sudden offer from the president to debate as a signal that you guys realize you need to change the subject after some really bad polling? You know, we went to, had a back and forth on polling yesterday. Um, and I, you know, it just goes back to very the core of what I said to you, which is, look, this is a president that has had a pretty successful legislative, especially legislative uh, tenure in the first three and a half years and has delivered on many things that are popular to the American people. The truth out in the press room. We have no choice but to accept the verdict, which is that now moving forward, there is no legality to the United States election, presidential election cycle. I have thought since I was two years old, been told by my mom and dad, oh, be a lawyer, oh, be, you could be a president, ah, bah, 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 bah. but I've always been for the independent thought, the person that's pushing from both sides saying, no, look at the actual issue in front of you. And now I'm being told that all of those votes didn't matter, didn't matter. Why? Because Joe Biden was going to trick Donald Trump into getting on the debate stage, but through a stipulation where the National Presidential Debating Committee, or whatever the fuck it's called, which is probably just a bunch of rich Republicans and Democrats that are satisfied anyway, because of them, or because he's not a part of that anymore, and now he gets to do it directly with the news organization, they can do whatever they want to do. But even in doing that, Realize that that question that's proposed up here to the campaign manager is from the news organization that's in charge of the debate. So you have an actual president going on TV, having that person tell them, the TV, what the rules are live on TV. And if you don't believe me, here's another part of it. No audience. 
So you say no live audience. You want it in a television studio without an audience. Does that mean if the Trump campaign insists on an audience, no deal? Listen, I think the Trump campaign made their proposal very clear when Donald Trump said he'd be willing to debate anytime, anywhere, any place. Uh, and so what we want and what we have laid out is that we want to do this sooner rather than later. We should do it in June after his criminal trial is likely to have concluded and after the president returns from the G7 summit. Uh, it should be, yes, in studio uh, with no audience so that the candidates can clearly articulate uh, their vision audience, for the country. Free is an audience a deal breaker? Is, it, and then we is, should, an audi is an audience a deal breaker for you? Listen, it's Donald Trump who said he would do this anytime, anywhere, any place. So I don't think that they should have any problems with what, with what we have proposed. He's the one who said he's ready to go. Um, so we should be set to go once we have proposals in from networks. Uh, we're excited to debate. You want to know how CNN found out that they don't have an audience for their debate? They found out from the person that allowed them to debate. Joe Biden, who's in control of the entire debate. But back to my point, back to the point of my opening, the point of the titles, which is clearly like, you know, Matt and Shane ruined the election. Matt and Shane ruined RFK. I can't believe Matt and Shane's secret podcast did something unsecret and did this shit, whatever I come up with. Okay. But the reason that you're here, the reason you've been watching this, the explanation, it's all done is because when they let it slip, the dominoes came into effect Trump jumped on board, and now we have just this really dumb debate between two people when clearly the United States wants the third-party choice. And I truly believe, as somebody that has voted third-party now three times, that, well, in the first one, it was, fuck you, Republicans, for not letting other people speak at the convention that go against you. I think that Nikki Haley should talk at the or at the fucking Republican convention. I think that that's the point. You should always be doing that. They should all that we're running be doing that as good sports. They should all be talking. They should all be talking about what they do and advocating to the candidate. That's how parties should work, period, regardless of country. So that was my one little spout in politics and my one little out in politics. And I've been in media ever since, but goddamn, now I'm so fucking independent in media, I'm fucking sitting in my goddamn own bedroom doing a podcast. <sighs> Guys, the last thing I'll say is that when it comes down to Robert Kennedy Jr., um, I think a vote for him still isn't a throwaway vote for either side. And the reason that I say that is because not only now are you voting against the two people that are boxing out a third voice, but you also can, you know, possibly prove the point that RFK has been making this whole time, which is that if it was just him and Joe Biden, or if it was just him and Donald Trump, Robert Kennedy Jr. cleans the floor. We also did a poll. We did the biggest poll ever done, in, at least in this, this presidential race. A typical poll like the Quinnipiac poll or the Harvard Harris poll, the Siena poll, the Gallup poll has from 1,200 to usually 2,200 people that they interview. We interview, we surveyed 26,000 people. The poll has a margin of error of virtually zero. So anybody who does that poll would end up with the same results. And the, it was very interesting because what it shows is that if I stay in the race, Biden loses. If I get out of the race, Biden loses even worse. He loses two extra states, Maine and Virginia. We did every state. And if Biden dropped out of the race, I would beat Trump. So Biden cannot beat Trump, but I will beat Trump. I don't beat him by much. I beat him by three electoral votes, but Biden loses catastrophically to him. Um, and then if Trump dropped out, which of course will never happen, but then I beat Biden in a landslide. So I beat President Biden. I take 39 states and he only gets 11. 
So I'm actually in a different position nobody's ever been in history, which is a third party candidate who in a head to head race will beat either of the candidates from the major parties. Comedy world colliding with political world. And it's literally my two idols, the gods, Shane Gillis, Matt McCusker, Robert Kennedy Jr. What a fucking awesome orgasm for Alex R. Wagner. And uh, I th- I- I'm going to say I thank Matt McCusker most of all for putting that together because I feel like he's the one that wanted it to happen. He, I guess Trump just he came to the conclusion that it's very serious to even discuss nuclear weapons. And he's given a rally and he's like, there's a new N word. And everyone's like, Jesus Come on, Christ, man. Come dude. On. And he's like, no, not the other one. <laughs> like, God damn it, dude. But, you know, I, I don't know. It was about, I think it was two years ago. Your producer would probably be on top of this. Um, <laughs> he's looking at girls on Instagram. <laughs> we all started talking again about the election. We all started talking about the debates and talking about political issues and talking about the Trump trial that we're about to talk about and all the wacky shit going on with that. And we got completely off of the war in the Middle East for one week at least. And that's all because of Matt Shane and Gillis McCusker. Matt and Shane. Can I just be gay for Matt and Shane? Let me be gay for Matt and Shane. Let me be gay for Matt and Shane. Please let me be gay for Matt and Shane. Drinking the wrong beer. And Matt McCusker was like, I'm a journalist. Let me settle it. Don't vote. But if you vote, vote for RFK. Okay, so think about this. If, like, somehow, like, three or four people died or something, and then Nancy Pelosi became president, she wouldn't have debated Trump. I myself would never recommend going on the stage with Donald Trump, but the president has decided that's what he wants to do. I think the format he is suggesting is a good one. I think you all should have separate town hall meetings with them let them challenge them with questions about the future and uh, let the public make its decision. I can't believe that Nancy Pelosi wouldn't debate Trump. I kind of, I kind of want to see, I kind of want to see Nancy Pelosi debate Trump. I kind of want to see that more than anything. Can we just do live on pay-per-view Donald Trump versus Nancy Pelosi? I'm saying I'm calling it right now. In 10 years, Donald Trump, Nancy Pelosi debate live on pay-per-view as a pregame to UFC 37 produced by Dana White. Uh, you know, sponsored by Happy Dad. <laughs> Featuring Jake Paul. Mike Tyson special guest referee. Let's go. You know, I posted a clip last week. There was like the Biden campaign being like, yeah, we're definitely going to debate, which is weird because then literally the next day is when they were like, we're not doing the actual commission debates. And then two days later, they're like, what's up? I'm a Joe Biden. Yeah. So I had a bunch of comments last week, though, that were like, Joe Biden's not going to actually even get on the debate stage. Joe Biden's too old. I'd like to see Joe Biden try. He's probably going to quit. Even Trump being like, he's probably going to quit. He's probably not going to really do it. And so, like, MSNBC is kind of right about this one. By the way, they, they never learn. They never learn. These Republicans never learn. They constantly underestimate Joe Biden. They constantly say he's an old man. He can't speak. They're, as you know, if you're debating somebody, even if you're a lot better than him, you just go, you know, I just, I hope I'm able to walk off the stage. My hound dog will still talk to me afterwards because he's such a great debater. I'm going to make a fool of my, you constantly talk yourself down. These Republicans keep saying, oh, we just hope he gets through the state of the union. He's so old and addled. We that just was hope. amazing. And, and think about it. That was a triumph. All you can do is you can judge somebody by but they're, they're toughest challenges. What I'm saying there is that like MSNBC is sort of right because if you continue to demonize the fact that Joe Biden can't physically do anything, then you're going to be like ultimately surprised when he just like does simple things. 
Like, for instance, this weekend when he was like at a graduation or a military event or something and went on stage and almost tripped. And like these three guys are like, ah, oh, almost. <laughs> People too freaking excited to try to get Joe Biden to fall over. People want to see it too bad. They're like, can you CGI me some Joe Biden fall over videos? And I'm like, can, can we just fucking knock it off? Now we're done with this whole debate shenanigan fiasco that I feel like Matt and Shane definitely created. <laughs> um, so let's go to the Trump courtroom and uh, what's happening outside of that thing. Yeah, so somebody released uh, lots of penis balloons with Alvin Bragg, uh, the district attorney, um, I think the prosecuting attorney, as well as the judge's face on the penis balloons in New York. Congratulations. This court case is totally not compromised. It's totally legitimate. But that wasn't the only stunt this week at the Trump court case hearings. Trump kept getting gagged, and he is over being gagged. He knows he can't talk about the case. So what's he decided to do? Send the Republican Congress women and men up to audibly stand there across the street and scream about how it's all crazy shenanigans. Um, I also want to point out that they are telling people that they can't have cameras in the courtroom, but if they had nothing to hide and if they're truly being honest about this, why is it that you guys can't be in the courtroom and see exactly what we're seeing? Just because we're members of Congress does not mean we have authority more than you guys to know exactly what's happening, happening in that courtroom. So just an update. The president is doing well. He's in good spirits. We are here today because we know that this is nonsense and should not be happening in the United States of America. Furthermore, to Cohen, who had admitted to lying to members of Congress, that's contempt of Congress. Honestly, this might legitimately work if you can get, like, you know, somebody of authority to, oh, my God, is that the person that's third in line to become president of the United States saying that this is an illegitimate court case in the middle of Manhattan? This is the, the, the fifth week that President Trump has been in court for this sham of a trial. They are doing this intentionally to keep him here and keep him off of the campaign trail. And I think everybody in the country can see that for what it is. I'm an attorney. I'm a former litigator myself. I am disgusted by what is happening here. What is being done here to our entire system of justice overall. The people are losing faith right now in this country, in our institutions. They're losing faith in our system of justice. And the reason for that is because they see it being abused as it is being done here in New York. Yep, you just saw that. That was a real thing. The uh, Speaker of the House. Um, can we just, let's verify. Is this real court or not real court? Because like, if the Speaker of the House of the United States gets to go stand outside the courtroom and be like, this is bullshit, then I think we need to just like, stop the fucking court case now. Penis balloons with people's names on them. Remember when the guy lit himself on fire outside the courtroom? We should have stopped this madness then. But there's one Republican that definitely is not liking that other Republicans are doing this sort of thing. What, do you think hey, what about these people? Republicans going to the courthouse in Manhattan with the red ties and the dark suits and saying the case is bogus. Uh, you know, I think it's a little demeaning um, uh, to... Uh, uh, show up in front of a courthouse, and um, particularly one where we're talking about an allegation of paying a, a, a porn star. Um, uh, it's really, really very difficult to watch. Why is it difficult to watch? Well, uh, you know, there, there's a level of dignity uh, and decorum that you expect of people who are running for the highest uh, station in the land. 
and, uh, and, and going out and prostrating themselves um, in front of the public uh, to try and apparently um, curry favor uh, with the person who's our nominee uh, is a little embarrassing. Well, of course Mitt Romney's against this. Like, he hates porn. That was so mean of them to be like, but why do you think that that's... Don't ask him again. He's the Mormon. Obviously. He's against porn. Duh. <laughs> Mitt Romney's allowed to be against porn. This is not crazy. All right. <laughs> okay. Meanwhile, the stunts continue because here is a Staten Island house rep. And I guess like this is the first time I've ever seen this. I don't know who this person is that she's like, that's like testifying or whatever. But basically, it's just a proxy because this person just standing there to be like, yes, yep, all that happened. Everything happened that you're saying. And they're trying to confirm things that are going on in the courtroom. And it's like, did this, did you just bring some guy to like the fucking court to like fucking verify it? What is, who is this special guest? And like, even if we knew who the special guest was, does it really matter? Because pretty much just a prop to like, showcase how ridiculous the trump courtroom is uh one additional question i want to talk about the rigged and unprecedented jury selection process isn't it true that bragg's team asked the jurors if they followed trump on social media yes and isn't it true that they did not ask any of the potential jurors if they followed biden on social media or michael cohen or michael yes. cohen yeah. and isn't it true that 87 percent of the jurors said they voted for joe biden that's true. Is this unprecedented and lawfared jury shopping? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Political lawfare for the purpose of election interference to go after Donald Trump. Do you agree? Totally. This is one of the reasons that Trump's polls continue to skyrocket, and it's why President Trump will win in 2024 to end the illegal and warped weaponization of the justice system, because if they can illegally go after Trump, they can go after anyone. And it is. It's pretty... It's a pretty ridiculous courtroom. I'm just, it's a, it's a lot of bananas, all right, in one room. The funniest part of the Trump courtroom is that the New York Times, the Daily, which is like literally like the number two podcast in America, and I don't know why, but they do all these like emotionally story-driven fucking bullshit audio tiles. And every time they talk about the Trump court case, they have the guy that's like doing like the journalism from the courtroom, like for the New York Times. Like they have him like fucking record himself like waking up and he's like, hey, I'm just I'm just waking up right now. And it's May 15th, 2024. And it's the historic third day of the Trump trial. First floor. I'm uh, just leaving my apartment again, uh, 6.14 a.m., Monday, May 13th, recording one of my little voice memos again. He kept doing this so much that eventually he even was, like, self-aware enough to be like, yeah, I know I'm kind of being a narcissist, like, doing this, but, like, they're still posting them, so. I do feel like a goofball doing it. <laughs> but but they keep publishing them. Today is well, it's the climax of the prosecution's case today. Okay. But back to Mitt Romney. All right. Now Mitt Romney had a blue tie on, which is just as ridiculous as like these press people being like, they had red ties on. Why do you think they had red ties on? Huh? Why do they have red ties? Because they're Republicans? And he's like, well, I have a blue tie on because I'm a Mormon. <laughs> if he wasn't a Mormon, he would have been president. Also, as you heard earlier in this fucking podcast, I have a personal beef with Mitt Romney because of fucking Ron Paul. So, like, fuck Mitt Romney. But also, I will say this. Mitt Romney is right. Mitt Romney is right. Joe Biden could have solved this problem and probably still gotten reelected, especially since we're in the middle of a fucking war. Actually, two of them. But the dummy forgot to pardon Trump. It's a, a, a terrible fault for our country to see people attacking our legal system. That's an enormous mistake. Uh, I think it's also demeaning for people to quite apparently 
uh, try and run for vice president by donning the red tie and standing outside the courthouse. That, it's just, uh, I, I'd have felt awkward uh, were I one of those individuals. Um, but I, I can also say, I think President Biden made an enormous error. He should have fought like crazy to keep this prosecution from going forward. Uh, it was a win-win for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump is exonerated... Is that, Don, is that Joe Biden's job, or is that the... It let, shouldn't let there say, be a separation? You, I, I've been around for a while. If LBJ had been president and he didn't want something like this to happen, he'd have been all over that prosecutor saying, you better not bring that forward or I'm going to drive you out of office. But I'm pretty sure you support having separate but equal branches of government. I do, but I also... Let me tell you, I mean, you may disagree with this, but uh, had I been President Biden, uh, when the Justice Department brought out indictments, I would have immediately uh, uh, pardoned him. I'd have pardoned President Trump. Uh, why? Well, because it makes me, President Biden, the big guy. Honestly, think about that. Like, it, yeah, he should have. He should have just, he should have been like, I'm the better person. I'm so smug and me, me, me. I'm going to pardon you. And if he would have done that, and then he would have just like prying eyes this whole time, the whole fucking election just going at him, it would have been done. I think. Joe Biden would have had the moral high ground the entire time. Instead, we're looking like a third world Latin nation trying to put our fucking political prisoners in fucking prison. Political prisoners in prison. Okay, but yeah, so we have the whole Trump court case and all of that stuff, but remember that Joe Biden was investigated for a crime and they recorded that. But Joe Biden's not going to let us hear it. About an hour ago, we learned that, that President Biden has invoked executive privilege to prevent the American people from hearing the audio recordings of his testimony with special counsel Robert Herr. The, the American people will not be able to hear why prosecutors felt the President of the United States was, in special counsel Robert Herr's words, a, quote, elderly man with a poor memory and thus shouldn't be charged. Now I know why the House Speaker is like this other fucking court case is a sham because he's like mad as hell about these tapes or whatever. Release the tapes! I want to hear the Joe Biden tapes before the election because I want to know that I can trust him in the interview. I'm not going to let him happen. It's BS. House people should listen. You know what's really weird? It's like, okay, wait. So you can see the dead body of Osama bin Laden. Confirmed. But you can't see tapes of Joe Biden talking. That's weird. All right. Don't forget, Joe Biden lying about inflation again. I think inflation has gone slightly up. It was at 9% when I came in, and it's now down around 3%. But the fact is that I think people are just uncertain. And that's why we got to be steady, stay the course, and continue to produce these incredible jobs. And the job, and by the way, the pay for the jobs are, are outpacing the inflation rate they're paying. We're, we're going we're gonna to be able to deal with this. It's going to take a little more time, but we're just focused on it. I don't know why Joe Biden keeps lying about inflation, but uh, the, the press are finally fucking tired of him lying about inflation. So they're like, all right, enough of the bullshit. Press secretary, can you stop lying about inflation? I'm going to ask you about how the president talks about inflation. So for two times over the past two weeks, the president said inflation was 9% when he came into office. Is the president misleading Americans on that, or does he just not realize that inflation was 1.4% when he came so, in? So, you know, and, and, and thank you for the question, because I know that this, we got a lot of incoming on this yesterday. And look, I th what the president was, the point that he was making uh, is that uh, the factors that caused inflation was in place when he walked in into the administration. No, we're not going to we're not going to stop lying about inflation. Cool. Got it. Got it. Cool. 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 And if you thought that uh, you know, Jean Pen can green PR or whatever her name is or the press secretary, White House, that lady, you thought that she could say things that made sense. Well, here is the answer. Does this um, White House slash does the United States have any leverage to dissuade China from supporting Russia as much as it is? Look, I mean, we've been very clear publicly, we've been very clear privately, and we'll continue to do that. But that, that doesn't answer my question, Lee. Saying you've been very clear, what, what kind of leverage do you have to, to change I mean, this? Here's what I say, Jeff. When you have the EU, you have the G7, you have NATO, 
all saying what we are saying right now. Very clearly. Here's two House reps or senators or something arguing over whether a island is going to sink or float. I just wonder if the gentleman from the other side of the aisle is concerned that the additional aid that was voted on to go to Taiwan would cause that island to tip over in any point in the future. You know what? Um, I hope that I that the, island, I, I hope the that the island of Guam is floating on water and not on diesel fuel. <laughs> I don't know who had the worst joke. The guy that thought that the island would sink or the guy that said that diesel would make it sink. I think they're both probably bad. They're like bad, bad dad jokes. Bad dad jokes. That's what those were. They're bad dad jokes. All right. King Charles had cancer. Everybody has cancer over in Britain. The royal family, you know, like America's kind of like still royal family. Like we're all fucking white people or whatever. So here's white people portrait. That's a really bad portrait of somebody, of anybody, of a human being. Why is he floating? And if he's not floating, why did he wear the exact same color as the background? Did he really do that? Did they really did they really have him wear and like camouflage himself into the background? Like, just stand there for eight hours, Charles. It's part of your cancer routine. And then finally, don't forget, uh, if you forgot, then you shouldn't forget that the reason that California has a huge deficit and doesn't have any money, it's because of all these giant rain bombs they keep getting. Can we explain to Californians how we moved from a $100 billion surplus to such a significant deficit in just a matter of a few years? I want to be careful, um, either on the higher end or without precedent, for one-time purposes. So we anticipated, because we didn't want that surplus to go to ongoing commitments, we anticipated that shortfall. Uh, what we didn't anticipate is these rain bombs in December, January, February, and March. All the rain bombs, damn rain bombs. Stop these rain bombs, Bill Gates. Stop your rain bombs, Bill Gates. Stop it. Rain bombs. And I don't know if I'll put this in or not, but maybe I'll put this in or not. I don't know. Maybe I will. Just to give you guys a little update on the war. Uh, nothing's happening, which is scary. We're all worried about this, like, WWE event regarding the two, uh, people running for president, you know? It's like, oh, here's an empty podium. Oh, you're too old. I still challenge you to a game of golf. Ah, oh, I see you have Wednesdays off. Hmm, I'll fucking predict to beat you any day, but not RFK, a a a <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> We're falling apart, people. We're falling apart. But if you want to remember what the war is all about, here is the press secretary defense guy, the fucking guy that used to work at Coca-Cola. We're seeing parts of Gaza that Israel has, has cleared uh, of, of Hamas, where Hamas is coming back, right. including in the north, including in Khan Yunus. Um, as we look at, uh, at Rafa, uh, they may go in and have some uh, initial success, but at, but potentially at an incredibly high cost uh, to civilians, but one that is not durable, one that's not yeah. sustainable. And they will be left holding the bag on an enduring insurgency because a lot of armed Hamas will be left, no mm -hmm. matter what they do in Rafah. Or if they, if they leave and get out of Gaza, as we believe they need to do, uh, then you're going to have a vacuum, and a vacuum that's likely to be filled by chaos, by anarchy, and ultimately by... All right. Cheers. That's a great week. We've had a great week. This has been awesome. I'm so excited that you've done this again with me. Um, next time we should get each other's numbers and have sex or something. I don't know. Like, subscribe, anally probe me. There's also subscribe buttons like to like fucking donate and stuff on everything. So you could do that as well. Instagram. Uh, Patreon, other places. I'll probably have to get more popular, but, you know, maybe this episode will blow up or something. I don't fucking know. Watch 
the show every week in shit or whatever. We just fucking release it whenever we want. Just like the fucking secret pod. See you later. To fucking next week when we hopefully don't drop any bombs on Israel or Hamas. No. Wait. Drop bombs on Hamas, but not on Rafa. No, wait. Rafa. I don't know. Just drop bombs on the bad guy. Goodbye. Guys, I guess just don't fall out of the fucking sky, you know? Oh!